two verses from Matthew chapter number eight. Verse number eight and verse number 13. All right. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 8 says, reading from the New Living Translation, the Bible declares, But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. All right. If you skip down to verse number 13, the Bible declares, Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home. Because you believed it has happened. Uh -huh. And the young servant was healed in that same hour. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, for the time that is ours to share today, I would like to simply share from this subject, His Word, My Faith. His Word, My Faith. His Word, My Faith. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I'm sure some of us have been in situations where we have heard someone say the statement, I will take care of this. In that moment, after hearing <laughs> these words, uh, the only thing that we could do was sit back and believe. Believe that they would take care of the situation. Rather it be true or not, the situation that we were in was not in our hands. So all we could do was believe and have faith that the word they spoke of, I will take care of, of this was to happen. We learned this early in life. We learned to take our parents and those who had authority over us at their word. We believed the word that they told us and had faith that they were going to come through on whatever word they had spoken. Uh -huh. However, however, there has been times in our lives where we believe and have faith in other people's words and not in the word that God has said. Uh, the reason behind this is because we have all had moments in our lives where, where our faith has been shaken. Many, many things can cause our faith and belief to be shaken. We have friends and family and, and people that are in our, our, our ear gate that can cause us to have shaky faith, listening to their words and putting our trust in them rather than trusting God. What has caused your faith to be shaken? Is it the music that you're listening to? Is it is it the things that you're watching? Is it the people that you have been around? Brothers and sisters, as Christians, as believers, we have to be careful with the things we watch. Uh, we have to be careful with the things that we see and hear and do. Pastor often says, I gate, ear gate, congregate. These things have influence on our lives. And I just come to encourage you this morning because I know there has been times in our lives where we let people, places, and things influence us and cause our faith to be shaken. I know, I know you got it all together now, but I just need some real people that can say, yep, my faith has been shaken before, not only by what people have done, but from me, myself as well. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. we talk about how others might be causing our faith to be shaken and how others might be trying to get our faith to be shaken. But you, uh, you might ask, how can we ourselves cause our faith to be shaken? Well, I'm glad you asked this morning. Let me tell you, we ourselves can cause our faith to be shaken because of our pride. We think we are grown. We have the syndrome that nobody can tell us nothing. We got the Burger King mentality where we want to have it our way but the Bible the Bible tells us that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble we must learn to stop being prideful because when you are full of pride you are saying you know it all and you will start believing in your own abilities rather than believing in the word that God has spoken uh, okay you don't believe me come here Moses Moses was given specific instructions to speak to the rock and he struck the rock and that was because pride got in the way okay you still don't believe it come here king saul king saul let pride get in the way god told him to go destroy the amalekites and everything in the land but no saul and his people decided to bring back some of the things the 
instructions that were given, bring back things. Instructions were given to Saul, but Saul let pride get in the way. Okay, you still don't believe it? Come here. Satan, Satan could sing and lead worship so beautifully, the Bible says. But one day he thought he should be getting glory and tried to overthrow God. Ah, oh, so my brothers and my sisters, that's all I come to remind you today is that you must be mindful of your own selves. Uh, we must realize and understand that we can't let pride get in the way and cause right, us right. to believe in our own abilities, but rather we must trust and believe in the abilities that God has done for us. Yeah, yeah, because it was God that allowed you to get that car. It was God that allowed you to get the business. It was God that allowed you to get the house. It was God that allowed you to stay employed when all others around you's positions were terminated. We must be mindful that we don't let pride slip in. We must continue to trust in the Lord. For the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 3 that we must trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding but if we acknowledge him in all of our ways he will direct our path yeah I know it may seem hard right now but you gotta learn how to trust him I know they're trying to influence you and take you away from what is right but yeah you just gotta trust him I know it seems like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place but yeah you just gotta trust him because if you trust him everything will be alright the old saints the old saints will simply sing a song I will trust in the Lord until I die and is there anybody here that can say I will trust in the Lord for some trust in horses some trust in chariots but I will trust in the name of the Lord and the reason why I will trust in the name of the Lord because the Bible tells me for the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are safe and is there anybody here that can say I will trust in the Lord come hell or how water I'm still going to trust them friends and family may turn their back on me but I'm still going to trust them because I will trust in the Lord until I die I'm going to treat everybody right I'm going to trust in him because he will see me through when friends and family forsake me God will see me through ah, you ought to just look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor are you trusting are you trusting yeah are you trusting God are you trusting God uh, but however brothers and sisters even though we have many things trying to derail detour and deviate us from believing in his word and having faith we have some things that can help us on why we should believe his word so brothers and sisters we should be encouraged to know that yeah, I may have opposition, but even with opposition, I have a word I can take with me when the opposition arises, and I can remind myself of the word that was spoken. Uh, not only that, but even before we get in our text, we can see many words that were spoken, and all we must do is believe. Okay, you don't believe me. Let's take a journey. Matthew chapter number one. We see the angel of the Lord is speaking to Joseph in a dream right. and tells him that his virgin wife will have a baby. And this baby was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The text yeah, yeah. says after this dream, Joseph went and did as the angel of the Lord commanded Joseph yeah. Joseph could have did his own thing and could have fled and fleed from this relationship but Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded because he believed okay y'all still and get it right there come here Matthew chapter number two again Joseph the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in the dream and told Joseph to flee to Egypt and Joseph got up from the dream and did as the angel of the Lord told him again and Joseph believed and had faith in the word of the Lord from his angel. Okay, y'all still didn't get it right there. Matthew chapter 3. All I have is Bible for you this morning. That's all I came to preach. The Bible tells us that the Lord God used John to share a word and that word was to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Not only that, but the Lord used John to tell 
the people another message. He used John to tell them to say that, yes, I will baptize you with water, but there is one greater that I can't even buckle his shoes, and he will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Church family, the Lord used John to tell us basically that we got to get ourselves together because someone greater is coming, and our job is to take the word of the Lord and believe. Ah, my brothers and my sisters, that's all I came to preach to you this morning is that you got to take his word and believe. Okay, y'all still didn't get it right there. Well, come here to Matthew chapter number four. Yeah, I like Matthew four because yeah, uh, uh, the one thing when you uh, uh, are going through, sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Yeah, you're good at encouraging others, but it's different when you have to encourage what yourself. You okay, it's here in what the text. Jesus goes in into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus tries to tempt Jesus Je Satan tries to tempt Jesus, but Jesus had to believe his word and have faith and not to give in, but keep the faith. Not only that, but Jesus calls some disciples in this chapter and tells them to come and follow him and he will make them fishers of men. The disciples here, Simon Peter and Andrew didn't know all what was in the store, but they heard his word and believed it and followed him. And that's all I come to ask you this morning. Can you take Jesus at his word? You may not know all the details with what lines up behind it, but I come by to let you know it. You can just take him at his word and follow him and trust and believe in him. He will see you through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, y'all still to get it right there Matthew chapter number 5 Jesus teaches some things as well Jesus is here teaching and he gives some great words but in this fifth chapter it is up for us to believe for the Bible tells us in the fifth chapter that blessed are those who mourn so and they shall be comforted the Bible tells us in the fifth chapter that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you church his word uh, his word and our faith and Church's word, our faith, it's up to us to believe what his word teaches us. And is there anybody here that can say, I believe his word. I believe his word. His word is true and I believe it. For the Bible tells me that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. But if he said it, I believe it. And is there anybody here that can say, I will take him at his word. Yeah, I tried to take my spouse. Yeah, I tried to take my boo or my bae. Yeah, I tried to take friends or family. Family, but they all fail me. I will take the Lord at his word. And I just need five, six people and I'll make six that can give God praise right here because you believe and you will take him at his word. Uh, told you all I have is Bible, Matthew chapter number six. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these things will be added unto you. We must believe and have faith that if we seek God first, that everything that we we need will be added unto us. Uh, but you got to learn how to seek the kingdom first. Uh, we got many people seeking other things first. We got them seeking their titles and their degrees and their social status. But I come to let you know today, you must learn how to seek the kingdom first. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, seek the kingdom first. Seek the kingdom first. Yeah, yeah, Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. The Bible tells us that Jesus is talking about building on a strong and solid foundation. His word teaches us to build a strong foundation. And if we listen to his word and believe and build on this strong foundation, we will be all right. You want to know why we will be all right? Because when you are on a strong foundation, Foundation. The winds can blow, but you are settled and can't be moved because you are on a solid foundation. And that's all I come to ask you this morning. How is 
your foundation? Will you take Jesus at his word and build on a solid foundation? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest name, but G of Jesus' name and holy, holy Jesus' name. Yeah, my brothers and my sisters, we got to learn how to take Jesus at his word and trust in him. When you trust in him, that means you're building on a strong and solid foundation and you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and not be moved. Is there anybody here that can say, I will trust in the Lord and build on a strong foundation? That's all I came to preach to you this morning is that he has words here in the Bible. Jesus is speaking here. God is speaking throughout this entire Bible and we must take his word and believe it and have faith. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. So now we see here in the 8th chapter The Bible declares And I'm just about through and almost out of here The Bible declares The centurion came to Jesus Pleading with him That he would heal his servant That was sick Back at the centurion house yeah. Jesus tells the man I will come and heal him Centurion makes a shocking reply and says, if I may paraphrase this morning, no, there is no need for you to come to my home. All right. But Jesus, all you have to do is speak the word, speak the word. and my servant will be here. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus understood, I mean, I'm sorry, the centurion understood the authority and power of Jesus' words. And that's some of our problem today in the church. We don't understand the authority and power behind Jesus' word. The centurion understood and knew that Jesus had the authority to heal by just speaking the word. And I just want to pause for the cause and shift for the lift and let you know that Jesus has authority. And while you're trying to figure out on your own, all you need to say is, Lord, speak a word. Because his words have power. Just look at somebody and say his words have power. Yeah, okay, you don't believe me? Come here, the disciples. The disciples were in the midst of a storm. And Jesus was down at the bottom part of the ship sleeping. Huh? And they went and woke the master up and Jesus came up and he said, peace be still. Huh? My brothers and my sisters, Jesus words have power. Okay, you still don't believe me? Come here, John chapter 11. John chapter 11, Jesus friend Lazarus was sick and Jesus went to the grave and Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Huh? And Lazarus came forth out of that grave. Jesus words have power. Huh? And there, it might be somebody here today that might have been going through a situation. Huh? And Jesus spoke to your situation and said you are healed. Huh? Jesus spoke to your situation and said you are more than a conqueror. Jesus spoke to your situation and said you cannot die here because I have more left for you to do. Huh? And is there anybody here that can say I know that Jesus words have power. He has power in his mouth and authority to speak things uh, that's going on in my life. So brothers and sisters, we must believe that not only that Jesus' words have power, but when we believe we will see his power at work. That's right. This happened to the centurion. Jesus told him that because you believe it has been done for you and your servant has been healed. And that's all I come to tell you this morning is that he has spoken the word and it's our job to believe. Amen. It's our job to believe what he has said. Yes. And is there anybody here that can say, I believe his word. Yes. For his word tells me that by his stripes that I am already healed. His word tells me that yea, though I walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Huh? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Huh? But it doesn't stop there. My favorite part is verse 6, and it says, Surely goodness and mercy huh, shall follow me all the days of my life. Huh? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Huh? I'm so glad I believe his word. Huh? For his word tells me for I reckon huh, that the sufferings of this present time huh, are not worthy to be compared huh, to the glory that shall be revealed. Huh? And that's all I came to preach to you this morning huh, is that we must take his word huh, and we must have our faith. Huh, and when his word lines up with our faith, things will happen. Huh? My brothers and my sisters, huh, his word tells me and we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. His word tells me and we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. His word tells me that yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil. His word tells me uh, that I can trust in him uh, and never doubt him. Uh, his word tells me uh, that I can take him at his word. Uh, for God is not a man uh, that he should lie uh, nor the son of man uh, that he should repent. Uh, and is there anybody here uh, that can say I'm going to take Jesus uh, at his word. Uh, I'm going to take him uh, at his word. Uh, for his word tells me that he never sleeps nor slumber. His word tells me that he sits high and he looks low. His word tells me that he is coming back one day for a church without spot or wrinkle. Do you believe it today, church? Do you believe it today, church? Do you believe his word? I'm so glad I believe leave his word. I gotta leave you now. The clock on the wall says that's all. With that being said, see you later. Alligator. After a while, crocodile. May the Lord God bless your mighty, mighty good. But I come by to let you know that we gotta take his word and have faith. Because if we take his word and have faith, everything Everything, everything will work out for our good. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you know he will, shall he? Shall he? Shall he? Shall he? Yeah! Yeah! Be not dismay. Whatever be your thoughts. God will, God will, God will take care of you. His word, my faith, his word, my faith, his word, my faith. Shall I hear? Brothers and sisters, Thank you. Thank you. it's simple. God has words that He has placed in His book of promises, which is the Word of God. That's right, that's right. He and His Word are one. Amen. And if we believe, we can access the things that He tells us that we can access through His Word. Hallelujah, His Word, my faith. There may be somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus. Except for Jesus is easy as A, B, and C. Except believe and confess. Confess that you are a sinner. Believe in your heart that Jesus died and God raised him from the dead. And accept him to come into your life. We extend an invitation for you to come today if you don't know Christ.
Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time to share the word today. We see that none has come, but God, we ask God that you continue to help us, Lord, to build our faith so that we can believe and trust in the words that you have said. For it's your word and our faith. Yes, all of these things in your son, marvelous, majestic, in that name's the name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. His word, our faith. Keep the faith in his word and watch God do just what he said he would do. Amen? Amen. Amen. And for this reason, we are out.